the work on race, addressing racism and bias in medical education, I think started when um, the course directors of our Art and Science of Medicine course, that's our first year doctoring course, uh, Dr. Jo Joseph Trulio and Joanne Hoysack, who are the course directors of the Art and Science of Medicine course one and two, uh, began to reevaluate the teaching approach that we had in place that would basically allow students to develop a fictitious patient profile of a patient living with a specific chronic condition such as diabetes, hypertension, uh, COPD, and so on. We spent obviously a lot of time in class and in class you're always hearing about they're more likely to have poor kidney function or they're more likely to have heart disease or they're more likely to have diabetes. We got to the ASM course which is our doctoring course and again there was commentary on like social determinants of health you know people from East Harlem are more likely to have diabetes because they don't have access to food you know healthy foods or they're more likely to have um, poorly controlled hypertension because they're less likely to see a doctor but all of these things were sort of decontextualized, depoliticized, and it made it seem like the burden was the patient's fault, right? Um, and we found that to be problematic and incomplete. We were actually priming our students to utilize and overutilize stereotypes, which then led to a priming effect of actually engaging in judgments and interpretations and making associations based on people's demographic profile with a chronic condition, which quite frankly led to racializing chronic conditions and the ways in which people were living with um, and managing their, their health. Within the medical school, we were also noticing that there were some problematic practices that were occurring between the administration and students of color. Um, and so we basically saw that those two things were kind of linked, right? It's not coincident. It's it's not a coincidence that you have these kinds of conversations occurring in the classroom, and at the same time, the administration doesn't necessarily know how to ha handle students of color, particularly underrepresented minorities. Um, so we basically organized as a student group under the Anti-Racism Coalition, which was a coalition of uh, students from SEOM, LMSA, Doctors for America. Basically, a whole bunch of student groups came together and said, we need to talk about curriculum, we need to talk about what's going on in the clinical setting, and we need to talk about our relationship with the administration. That group then created a, a formal presentation that we ended up taking to Med Ed and um, to Dr. Charney. Once these issues were brought to the attention of leadership, leadership took a stand and committed to addressing these issues throughout, throughout the, the entire medical school. Um, in a variety of ways. One was really working closely with the students that comprise of the anti-racism coalition led by Giselle and others and sitting down having a conversation about like how did this get to be the way it is and how, what is it that we can um, undo in terms of how we are creating this learning environment for our medical students. We definitely realized that before we could, that we were coming with a specific vocabulary that the school hadn't really heard of before, right? They had never really heard of anti-racism. We've talked about bias, we've talked about diversity, we've talked about prejudice, um, maybe even dabbled in the concept of racism, but we re really never talked about anti-racism. Um, and so it was a lot of sort of onboarding in terms of teaching language before we could actually get to changing anything. So it was a lot of teaching, not in a way that's sort of, you know, condescending, but in a way that allows for collaboration. When it came time to creating a new curriculum, we were on the same page. When they formed themselves as the anti-racism coalition, that was a new term for us in medical education. I was like, what do you mean by anti-racism? And they introduced this whole pedagogy and the language and the vocabulary and the terms and the literature and the knowledge and, and were educating us while also asking us to take a stand. Right? So we were learning and doing at the same time as a leadership team. And that meant that we had to be honest with what we knew and what we didn't know. And that we didn't know it all in medicine. We had to build the capacity of our faculty to engage in these issues. Right, Physicians are not trained to facilitate conversations about systems of oppression. <laughs> They're not trained to um, facilitate conversations about racism and sexism and, and the ways in which um, structural biases play out in medicine and healthcare. We had to build out their capacity and that's something we're continually working on, um, not only in, 
enabling them and equipping them with the skills, the knowledge, and vocabulary, but also having them reflect on their own biases as an educator. Immediately, Joe Trulio, who's the ASM co-course director, and I uh, partnered with many students of color to think through how could we begin to develop curricular, not only modules, but an integrative focus throughout all four years of medical school, beginning with the biggest course, the Art and Science of Medicine course, right? The doctoring course. So we would dive deeper into these issues and bring it into the formal curriculum of our In Focus weeks, which are these weeks where there's no formal class, but it's a deep dive into other topic areas that are not necessarily formally addressed in the traditional medical education curriculum, such as health disparities and research and global health and law and science and medicine. And we began to, to you know, make sure that the ways in which the topics were being addressed were also being inter addressed through this lens of racism and bias, so that it wasn't seen as a separate, now we're going to talk about racism and bias, but that we're going to talk about the ethics of uh, consent to research through the lens of racism, through the lens of, of justice. We have built out additional curriculum that is replaced existing curriculum so that it is more integrative and that we are stacking it each year by each year so that a student hears from day one in orientation from Dr. Mahler, this is the school that you're at, this is the, the uh, we explicitly address and name racism in medicine. We explicitly deal with these issues and we're working and committed to creating the learning space for you to, to be challenged by it, to grow, to contribute and to transform into a physician that really is our mission, right? To be a catalyst for change. Really interested in what it means to grow leaders, particularly student leaders who come from underrepresented backgrounds. We're hoping to grow a, a group of students who can go on to become teachers in the future and co can, can go on to um, continue these conversations moving forward.